there. Very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you through all the top stories of the day here, starting with the headlines. Campaigning ends in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. Over 8 crore voters will exercise their franchisee in the May 16th polls. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena accompanies Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the Simhastha Mahakum in Ujjain on the second day of his visit, says amity with India under Modi is special and will improve. A 24-hour bandh call by the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha turns violent in Jharkhand. Over 550 people are arrested across the state for stir against domicile policy. And Brazil gets an all-white male cabinet. For the first time since 1979, massive protests erupt against suspension of former President Dilma Rousseff. But our top story this evening, campaigning finally came to an end today in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry, polling for 234 seats in Tamil Nadu, 140 constituencies in Kerala and 30 seats in Puducherry will be held on the 16th of May. Meanwhile, the Election Commission has set in motion its machinery to ensure free and fair polls in the states. Here are the details. Political parties making last-ditch efforts to woo voters. Wrapping up a fierce two-month-long campaigning for the elections in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry. In Kerala, an almost three crore strong electorate will cast in the single-face polling on May 16th. They will choose 140 lawmakers from 1,203 candidates, 109 of whom are women. Tamil Nadu will see a five crore eligible electorate choosing from 3,776 candidates for 234 assembly seats. Puducherry will have 9 lakh voters casting their votes to elect 30 MLAs from among 344 candidates. 21 of them are women and one is a transgender. The instructions of Election Commission of India, so we want to increase the percentage of voting, one. Second, all the voters will cast their vote ethically. Uh, we have around 25 lakh electorate. From the date on which the Commission has given a uh, schedule of elections, we are intensively taking up sweep activities. We have done a lot of uh, play cards, hoardings in many places. The Election Commission has taken all steps to ensure free and fair elections in all three states. It has also banned television channels and online portals from carrying political campaign-related news, video clips or debates till May 16th. Counting of votes in these states along with Assam and West Bengal will be taken up on May 19th. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And as campaigning in Kerala ended today, all political parties gathered at the Perukada Junction in Tiruvannantapuram. And Rajya Sabha TV's Akhilesh Suman was there and sent us this report. In this election festival of Indian democracy, Kerala presents a unique example. This is the place in Tiruvannantapuram. This is the junction in Tiruvannantapuram when after the poll, poll propaganda is over, every party comes here. Every party raises their banner, raises their flags here, be it CPM red flag, be it Congress tricolor with an, be it Bhagwa and green of BJP with lotus. Every party comes here. There is no confrontation in between this party at this moment. This is a unique example that Kerala presents in the whole country. Nowhere else it happens. This is the main junction of Tiruvannan Puram. It will be really a puzzle that what will happen in, the, in this election. But even BJP, who is a new entrant in this election, you can see there is there is no monopoly of any of the party. You can see the flag of BJP. You can see the election symbol of BJP. Every party is represented here. And the propaganda is over. Every party will go home. And on the 16th May, the people, the voters will come to the polling station and they will vote for whatever party of their choice. It will be interesting to see that who comes in power this time. Akhile Soman with camera person Om Prakash for Raj Sava Television in uh, Tiruvannamthuram. One can sense the excitement, of course, of the people there in those states. And we've got our correspondents, of course, tracking developments like you just saw. Akhilesh Suman, of course, uh, joining us at the moment on the phone line from Tiruvannamthuram. We also have Ravinder Singh Sharan joining us live from Tiruvarur. If I could come to you first, uh, Akhilesh, you know, just we just saw that report of yours there and all the political parties coming together uh, you know, signaling the end of campaigns and, you know, in a way saying, let's see now what happens on the 16th of May. What's the sense that you got? 
yeah it's a really interesting and heartening to see that all political parties are gathering at one place and there is no uh, slogan mongering against each other everybody is, is everyone is shouting for themselves but it is also understood that no one is um, campaigning against each other here it's uh, like a campaigning for each other not against each other and it is the tradition of kerala i have heard that for a long time this has been tradition that every at at uh, uh, they start gathering at four and they aim at six so so every party has now come to a situation that yes now uh, propaganda is over now they will go to from door to door to, to meet people uh, to uh, prepare for their agents how they can go to the polling station how people will come from home to the polling station these type of logistical arrangement parties will make so in in a way that i can tell you that kerala political culture is very different from any other state i have gone to tamil nadu i have gone to puducherry i have come to uttar pradesh bihar many other states but kerala is a unique example that how political parties contain themselves in a way that confrontation even even when there has been a history of confrontation in some pockets but in polling stations there has been no confrontation yes. and election commission is at ease at I, I, i can tell you that election commission in kerala is much at ease than any other state is, uh, when it goes to for election so so it's really heartening to see kerala different than any other state Thank absolutely you. absolutely and we'll have to wait and see of course what happens on 16th and that counting day on the 19th thanks so much akhilesh for joining us for the moment uh, if i could come to you now ravindra uh you know in kerala we did see the parties coming together in a sense uh, you know forgetting uh, all the accusations for once but is that the sense you got in tamil nadu because we did see a lot more mudslinging in the state uh, you know especially between the two dravidian parties yeah tracy what my what my colleague has said tamil nadu is equally opposite to what is happening in kerala right now <laughs> tamil nadu only share history with the, Uh, kerala and at not at all sharing the political culture with kerala we have seen a lot of acrimony during the campaign we have uh, we have been looking the acrimonious behavior of both dravid party for the last at least four decades now uh, in this election also we have seen the uh, all the uh, the many leaders have stooped down to a new nadir when they have appro- al- al- uh, they have leveled allegation against each other especially when we have see that uh, how the ai dmk has accused the uh, non nigerian uh, dmk patriarch of the kaveri water dispute and the nepotism yes. also he has been accused by the political parties that uh, he has been involved in many corruption cases on the other hand we have seen that uh, how the dmk party is involving in trading charges against the ai dmk chief jailalita when they said that she was not available when the people require her most she has shown an impartable Uh, in socient and aloof behavior when the people of uh, tamil nadu require her most mm. at the time of floods in november when unprecedented amount of rainfall has come here also when the, uh, we saw about the history uh, when we saw the present status of uh, politics in tamil nadu we have seen that uh, the prime minister who came here and uh, 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 addressed many rallies he has accused both the dravidian parties that they are responsible for the poor Uh, present of the kerala state kerala has uh, tamil nadu state sorry tamil nadu has a lot of uh, uh, lot of natural resources 13 districts of tamil nadu are sharing a coastline but yes. still the people are very poor and they have to go outside because for work and employment because yes. the poliana and the exsanguination which should be given to the investors the both the political parties fail to provide that to the uh, the investors and this is one of the reason that employment is so much huge unemployment is a big problem here and for the sake of employment the people has to go outside absolutely also, this is some of the issues of course which hopefully the voter is going to be looking at these are some of the issues that you all have been highlighting uh, from the state and we'll have to wait and see if that's what uh that's what the voters of course vote for on the 16th of may thanks so much ravinder for joining us as well it's been a long day uh we'll do let it go now thanks so much for joining us meanwhile uh in more news in fact coming from the state electoral office uh, of officers seized 570 crore rupees from three containers in tirupur district the personnel accompanying the containers said that they were transferring money from sbi in coimbatore to visakhapatnam branches but did not have the necessary documents the flying squad of the election department along with paramilitary forces seized the cash on saturday morning during a routine vehicle check the containers escorted by three cars were given a chase when they didn't stop 
The men in the cars who claimed to be policemen from Andhra Pradesh were neither in uniform nor were they able to produce proper documents to substantiate their claims. The vehicles were taken to the district collectorate in Tirupur. On to more national news, and Sri Lankan President Metripala Sirisena today said that the cordial ties between the two neighbours are poised to strengthen further. Visiting the great stupa in Sanchi in Madhya Pradesh, the Lankan President also unveiled the statue of Angarika Dharmapala, who played a major role in the revival of Buddhism in India. He praised Indian government's effort to secure and develop Buddhist archaeological sites. Earlier in the day, the Lankan President, along with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, also visited the Simhastha Mela in Ujjain, Sirisena attended the valedictory session and also released the Simhasta Declaration. Speaking at the valedictory session, Modi called for development of inner self to overcome the problems of expansionism, global warming and militancy. Sirisena is here on a two-day visit. He held bilateral talks with Modi in New Delhi on Friday evening. Modi pitched for a permanent solution to the issue of frequent arrests of Indian fishermen by the Lankan Navy. I am confident that our relationship will enhance and also blossom in the future. In addition, I appreciate the keen interest and commitment India has exhibited in socio-economic development in Sri Lanka. I thank India with great appreciation of such commitments. आज विश्व दो संकटों से गुजर रहा है। एक तरफ ग्लोबल वार्मिंग, दूसरी तरफ आतंकवाद। क्या उपाय है इसका? आखिर इसके मूल में कौन सी चीजें पड़ी हैं? होली और दिन दाव तेरे रास्ते से मेरा रास्ता ज़्यादा सही है यही तो भाव है जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट की ओर हमें घसीटता ले चला जा रहा है विस्तार बात यही तो है जो हमें कॉन्फ्लिक्ट की ओर ले जा रहा है युग बदल चुका है विस्तार बात समस्याओं का समाधान नहीं है हम हॉरिजॉन्टल की तरह ही जाए समस्याओं का समाधान नहीं है हमें वर्टिकल जाने की आवश्यकता है अपने भीतर को ऊपर उठाने की आवश्यकता है On to more news on the 24-hour bant called by the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha against the new domicile policy turned violent in the state today. Hundreds of people were arrested for the protests against the policy that opposition parties allege is unfair to tribals. Here's a report. Massive protest in Jharkhand. Many vehicles were set on fire and damaged on Saturday. 550 people were arrested after a 24-hour bant called by the opposition parties against the domicile policy turned violent. Bharatiya Janta Party ka sarkar jo rugwar das ke netit mein chal rahi hai wo adivasi mool vasi ka virodhi hai isi liye aaj gaon se leke sahar tak aaj ne apna virodh jataya the new policy states that people who lived in Jharkhand for 30 or more years will be considered residents. The JMM wants the 1932 survey considered for eligibility to protect tribals. जो भी बंद समर्थक आते हैं, वो किसी भी बंद समर्थक को सड़क जाम नहीं करने दिया जाएगा, सड़क पे आगजनी, टायर जलाना ये सब चीज नहीं करने दिया जाएगा। इसके लिए प्रशासन पूरी तरह से मुस्तैद है। the domicile policy has been a controversial issue ever since the birth of Jharkhand in the sun 2000. Besides the JMM, the RJD, CPI and the Jharkhand Vikas Morcha Prajatantrik are supporting the band. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Over to Bihar where two people have been detained for the murder of senior journalist Rajdeo Ranjan who was shot dead in Siwan district yesterday. His murder has triggered a political slugfest with the BGP claiming that Jungle Raj has returned to the state. Ranjan was one of the two journalists killed this week, the other being from Jharkhand. Within a space of 24 hours, two journalists were shot dead in Bihar and neighbouring Jharkhand. On Friday evening, Rajdev Ranjan, the bureau chief of the Hindi Daily Hindustan, was shot dead in Bihar's Sivan district. Five shots were fired at him from extremely close range near the Sivan railway station. Two people were detained in the case. 
Police say professional shooters could be involved in the killings. दो लोगों का भी हिरासत में लिया गया चार लोगों को गिरफ्तार किया गया था उसमें दो लोगों को इस कांड में पूछताछ के लिए डिटेन किया गया है और जल्द से जल्द उनकी पूछताछ से कुछ ना कुछ एक दिशा मिलेगी जांच को और कांड का स्पष्ट उद्भेदन होगा दरअसल जो सीसीटीवी है उसका फुटेज नहीं मिला है टेक्निकल जो एक्सपर्ट है उन्होंने देखकर बताया है कि इसमें रिकॉर्डिंग नहीं अवेलेबल है तो उसको हम लोग फोरेंसिक लैब से भी चेक करा लेंगे रंजन वॉज डिक्लेयर डेड ऑन अराइवल एट द नियरेस्ट हॉस्पिटल Police are still working on the motive for the killing. Ranjan was cremated early on Saturday morning. Well, it is uh, extremely unfortunate that uh, a journalist was killed under such circumstances. The state government must investigate, and whosoever are responsible uh, need to be brought to justice because uh, an impression uh, should not be allowed to be created. that uh, people are able to get away with any kinds of criminality and i am confident that the bihar government will act and act decisively in order to bring the culprits to justice media reports said ranjan had written against local politicians on several occasions evoking death threats from many quarters sewan is the stronghold of former rjd parliamentarian mohammad shahabuddin who is serving a life sentence for the abduction and murder of two people in 2004 मैं दोनों ही पत्रकारों पर की हुई हत्या पर अपना शोक व्यक्त करता हूं और हमारी सरकार जो भी इस हत्या में अभियुक्त हैं उनको गिरफ्तार करके उनके विरुद्ध सख्त कार्रवाई करें स्थानीय स्तर पर जो खोजी पत्रकारिता है वो संकट में पड़ती जा रही है और जब वो अपराध के और भ्रष्टाचार के मामले खोलते हैं तो स्थानीय नेताओं को दिक्कत होती है लगता है कि दोनों घटनाएं शायद उसी का परिणाम बीजेपी यूज द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू अटैक द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ओवर व्हाट द पार्टी क्लेम्ड द डिटीरियोरेटिंग लॉ एंड ऑर्डर सिचुएशन इन द स्टेट नाउ अ सीनियर जर्नलिस्ट हैज बीन शॉट डेड बिफोर दिस देयर आर मेनी रिपोर्ट्स ऑफ मर्डर व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज दिस व्हाट द पीपल ऑफ बिहार हैड वोटेड फॉर नीतीश जी इज गवर्नमेंट वाज ब्रॉट बैक ऑन द होप दैट डेवलपमेंट वुड टेक प्लेस नॉट टू ब्रिंग बैक जंगल राज टू Meanwhile in neighboring Jharkhand's Chatra district 35 year old Akhilesh Pratap Singh was shot dead by unidentified people near the panchayat secretariat of his village Akhilesh worked for a local news channel Chief Minister Raghubar Das condemned the incident So far there have been no arrests in the case Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV North India continues to reel under intense heat wave conditions with mercury at several places touching 45 degree Celsius mark Shri Ganga Nagar in Rajasthan recorded a maximum of 45.7 degrees Celsius while the national capital simmered at 44 five notches above the season's average. The highest temperature in Uttar Pradesh was recorded in Banda at 44.4 degrees. Gujarat continued to reel under intense heat with Ahmedabad city recording the highest maximum temperature of the season at 44.6 degrees Celsius. The weather department has predicted a rise in mercury levels in the coming days. With that, let's take it through some more national news updates in nationwide. At least five people were killed after a major fire broke out in a building situated in Rajnagar area of Ghaziabad. The fire broke out in the building of a marketing agency due to a short circuit in the air conditioner. Dairy farmers of Bargar district spilled hundreds of liters of milk to protest against the Odisha State Cooperative Milk Producers Federation over rejecting 20,000 liters of milk procured from Bhedan and Barpali area of the district. The farmers stopped an Omfed tanker bearing milk cans and spilled them on the road. Police arrested five Maoist rebels from Eastern Bihar for their involvement in the recent attack on a construction company. The attack took place in the Baba Hans Construction Private Limited near the Bhagwanpur Mall on the 10th of May. The rebels were arrested from the Jahanabad area. With that a quick break here we'll be back with international news in a bit. Stay with us. Translation means converting knowledge into products useful for improving the quality of life so we need to apply that knowledge to find solutions and that is what we are trying to do you you know in this institute somebody who has understanding of biology somebody who has understanding of medicine 
somebody who has understanding of engineering if a team is put together can we then develop novel diagnostics watch you reka with dr sudhanshu brathi dean at translational health science and technology institute only on rajya sabha tv Welcome back. In some more news, uh, we're getting at this point of time. Uh, the United States has backed India's entry into the elite group of the nuclear suppliers group. The U.S. has said that India meets the missile technology control regime requirements and is ready for entry into the exclusive club. China and Pakistan, though, have opposed it. Defending its move, China claimed that several members of the 48-nation bloc shared its view that signing of the NPT was an important standard for the NSG's expansion. U.S. sources recently told the news agency ANI that they are disappointed with Chinese tactics of using Pakistan's non-credentials with the NSG to settle scores with India. U.S. officials, though, maintain that India's non-proliferation credentials can never be compared with Pakistan's, as Islamabad has a history of selling nuclear technology to rogue states like Libya. And in more international news, Brazil's new interim president, Michel Temer, has appointed a new all-male cabinet, inviting criticism that it did not represent the country's ethnical diversity. Suspended President Dilma Rousseff also pointed out that for the first time since 1979, Brazil will have a cabinet without a woman. Suspended Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff criticized the new interim government for being entirely made up of white male politicians. Rousseff said the cabinet did not represent one of the world's most ethnically diverse nations. Rousseff has denounced her removal as a farce and sabotage and has vowed to continue her legal fight. E ilegítimo do ponto de vista de seus votos. Nós lutaremos para voltar, voltar. E além de lutar para voltar, obviamente nós lutaremos para recompor uma base parlamentar no futuro. The new Brazilian cabinet under interim president Michel Temer has no women members for the first time since 1979. The new government's chief of staff said they were unable to find any woman suitable for the cabinet. The new administration, which seeks to rebuild the country's economy, will be in stark contrast to that of Dilma Rousseff, who had seven women in her cabinet. Teria que tomar essas medidas projetando, como foi dito aqui, curto, médio e longo prazo, porque esse é o caminho que terá que ser percorrido para nós resgatarmos a confiança, para nós resgatarmos a nossa viabilidade como Estado, bom prestador de serviço. Meanwhile, leftist demonstrators took to streets on Friday to protest the Senate's decision. Eu não posso concordar com o que está acontecendo. Não posso, porque a direita, inconformada com não ter ganho a eleição no voto, está querendo ganhar no tapetão. Isso não dá para se conformar. Vice-President Michel Temer will be the interim president during the impeachment trial of Rousseff. Temer has stressed that economic vitality is his key task and that he would do everything to protect and expand economic and social programs. The Senate suspended Rousseff from office for up to 180 days. She will face trial on charges of breaking budget rules. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Hezbollah today said that its top military commander, Mustafa Badruddin, died of a result, uh, as a result of artillery shelling by a Sunni armed group in Damascus in Syria. Earlier, the group believed that Badruddin was killed by an Israeli airstrike. The Lebanese Shia group had announced his death on Friday and a military funeral was held for him on the same day. 55-year-old Badruddin was one of the highest-ranking officials in the group and believed to be responsible for its operations in Syria, where thousands of its members are fighting alongside Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. With that, let's take us through some more international news in Global Buzz. Amid escalation of tensions between the U.S. and China over the South China Sea issue, top military commanders from the two countries held a video conference during which America underlined its right to freedom of navigation and upholding rule of law in the waters. The video connection, though, was lauded by both as a valuable channel of communication. The United States is concerned about indications that Nigeria's Boko Haram jihadists are sending fighters to join the Islamic State in Libya in increased cooperation between the two groups. Boko Haram has pledged loyalty to the Islamic State, which has seized parts of Libya, Syria and Iraq. 
but little has emerged about the extent of the cooperation. Italy has evacuated at least 13 Libyans for medical treatment after they were wounded in recent clashes and a bomb attack against troops battling Islamic State militants in Libya. This is the second time this year that the Italians have evacuated Libyans wounded in the Islamic State attacks. The defense capabilities possessed by the US, Russia and India are among the main factors driving China to modernize its nuclear force and bolster its strategic strike capabilities. In a report to the Congress detailing China's nuclear power, Pentagon yesterday said that the country was deploying new command, control and communications capabilities to its nuclear forces to improve the control of multiple units in the field. And now let's uh, get you through all the latest in the world of sports in Sports Beat. The BCCI has called for a special general meeting on the 22nd of May to elect its new president after the resignation of Shashank Manohar. Anurag Thakur is most likely to get the job where Rajiv Shukla and MCA President Ajay Shirke are other contenders. In the Italian Open, Sania Mirza and Martina Hingis duo will uh, challenge Irina Camelia Begu and Monica Nicolescu of Romania for the place in the women's doubles final in Rome. The defeated Raquel Atawa and Abigail Spears 6-4, 6-2. While in the other quarterfinals, India's Rohan Bapana and Romanian Florin Magia cruised past uh, Philip Paul Schreiber and Victor Troichki 6-3, 6-4. They will now face Vasek Popsipil uh, Pop and uh, Jack Sock in the semi-finals. Novak Djokovic maintained his supremacy over Rafael Nadal with seven successive victories over the Spaniard. Coming from behind in both sets, he finally managed a 7-5, 7-6 win in an encounter that went nearly two and a half hours to reach the semi-finals of the Italian Open. Indian boxer Vijendra Singh scored a knocked out Andre Soldra of Poland in a super middleweight contest at Bolton in the UK. Vijendra completed his sixth successive victory barely a minute into the third round at the Macron Stadium. He will now contest the World Boxing Organization Asia title in front of his home crowd in New Delhi on the 11th of June. Senegal's Fatma Samba Diof Samora will be FIFA's first female Secretary General, succeeding Jerome Valshke, who was banned from football related activity for 12 years. 54 year old Samora has spent uh, 21 years working for the United Nations. Her tenure at FIFA will start from June. And that's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.